everyone! Here's a new chapter of my Farindale Kingdom story. Last time, Lawrence the Wizard meets his generational companion, Phoenix Crimson, or nicknamed Crimson Spear, as he approaches to catch the magical feather he dropped. He is surprised by Crimson's arrival. What will happen next? Here the story continues. The red flaming colored bird stood on Lawrence's arm. It squawked and squawked and shrieked. Willow ran up to the pair and tried to calm down the bird. Lawrence tried to shake off the phoenix, but it held on tightly to him. Its big nails dug into his cloak's sleeve. Then he got an epiphany. Oh, I got it! He called out. I'm remembering so much of my grandfather now that I'm seeing this bird. He wants his feather back! That's what summons him! He reached into his pocket and grabbed the feather. The bird quickly took it in its sharp beak and cried out in Lawrence's face. It flew to Willow, who stood there with an arm outstretched. She was excited about meeting face to face with this lovely bird of legend. It took one sniff of Willow's flowery perfume and with a disgruntled face flew immediately back to Lawrence's arm, grabbing him tightly again. The bird looked the wizard in the eyes with a mean face. All of a sudden, it spoke. To all's surprise, the phoenix began to talk. Talk with words which the others could understand. Well, why don't you call upon... Why do you call upon me, old man? I see you have the wrong bird. Perhaps more. A crow would suit you then, now. Now how about that? Crimson Spear squawked. Lawrence scowled. Well, you don't have the brightest feathers if you ask me either, Crimson, he said back meanly. The others jumped in and Willow interjected. Stop! Stop! You guys, stop! This isn't the place or the time to argue. Lawrence here is by far the greatest wizard in this entire land. I would know so. I'm the princess here. Luvisa stepped in and nodded his head in agreeance. You should talk to him with some respect, she said. Crimson laughed in his tight, ear-piercing bird's chuckle. Respect, I say. No, no. What he did is absolutely disgraceful, dis disgraceful to our species. Using our plumage for his own selfish needs, then gaining the audacity to throw it away. Let the breeze take it to far-off lands where, oh my goodness, my feathers may stick to the sides of sea monsters in the sun, then slip violently into the deep dark seas, never to be witnessed again. Is that the kind of respect one gives to my species? We were the first. Before dragons. Oh, and even before wizards. The great red birds of fire. We brought justice to those below us. And for what? Generations to come, our species to shrink in size, sit upon the shoulders of owners. Willow understood his agony. Crimson, we aren't here to ridicule you. In fact, Lawrence here was never going to throw away this amazing specimen. He simply remembered what his grandfather did when calling upon you. Lawrence pulled his arm away with the bird, away from him, and held it out in front. He, l he held his other hand close to Crimson, to let him sense that he was not with bad intentions. My sincerest apologies, sir. Sure, I was quick. I was a bird myself, too, Lawrence spoke. I wanted my wings back. Never did I want this form, but it suits me now. If your wings were taken, Crimson, I would assume you'd jump at the opportunity to get them back. Never, ever did I mean any disrespect to you. Though, it is going to take a lot of getting used to having a giant bird gripping my arm. Oh, goodness. Crimson leaned forward and nuzzled Lawrence's hand. Of course, a true wizard is logical. Not too logical, but just enough. You are enough to prove my attendance to guard you. A true companion shows respect for those who came first. I am a, not a pet parrot. Smaller than the mighty meteor-sized phoenixes of the past, no, but no parrot. You, my friend, you've finally shown me that you are neither a crow. To be continued.